worship service broadcast is coming to you from Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church of Marshall, Minnesota, where a member of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. In our worship today, we'll be singing from Christian worship. Our liturgy is found on page 15. Our psalm is Psalm 33, found on page 79. Our hymns are hymn number 288, 283, 536, and 282. May God bless us in the worship of him this morning. morning we follow the order of the common service as it begins on page 15 in the front of the red hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, 
and, and trusting in my Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ I, pray. I pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on me, a sinner. sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory to God on high. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. Our first lesson, again taken from the book of Acts, the 17th chapter. This portion of God's Word will also serve as the basis for our sermon meditation this morning as well. When they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city official, shouting, 
These men have caused trouble all over the world and have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of a more noble character than the Thessalonians. for They received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. The word of the Lord. I now invite you to chant with me Psalm 33, found on page 79. This lesson is recorded for us in 1 Peter chapter 2. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumbled because they disobeyed the message, which is what they were destined for, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Gospels recorded for us in the 14th chapter of John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to you, Lord. Now let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me. The words I say to you are not just my words, my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. Let us now join with Christians the world over and confess the faith that we have in our God this morning according to the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 19. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As was mentioned, the Word of God for our consideration this morning is recorded for us in the book of Acts, reading from the 17th chapter. Dear fellow students of God's Word, each week, a lot of time, a lot of thought goes into what is presented in a, a worship service or a Bible class, or for that matter, whenever we gather together around God's Word. A lot of thought and a lot of effort go into it because this is a special time. Every verse of every song, the type of music that's played, the topics that are chosen, whether to be elaborated on within a sermon or as a topic for a Bible class itself, all scrutinized. Scrutinized rather closely, not just so that is free of doctrinal errors, but so that it is good and well done. It's my responsibility to faithfully dispense the gospel and to clearly articulate the Lord's word and will. So each week, especially with regard to the Sunday service, when most people have maybe their only contact with the church, his minister, and the word, it's important. And I pray that it is presented well, and that it's also well-received. Now, by well-received, I don't mean that, that you just like it or that you appreciate how the service went off that day or a particular topic in, in Bible class. Well-received means that when you hear it, you recognize that this is the Lord Himself that is speaking to you. Well-received means that when you hear this, you can put aside the personality of the preacher. You can set aside also 
evaluating excellence in the manner in which it was presented, or the hymns that were sung, and how they were played, or whatever it might be. And instead, you can focus on and be convinced of, this is the genuine message. This is it. This is what God himself has recorded for me to hear and apply in my life. Now, I know as a minister of the gospel, that scares the bejeebers out of me. Because that means that what I'm saying is what God wants me to say. And if I in any way change or say something else, I'm saying something God doesn't necessarily want me to say. And I hope that also gives you just a, a little bit different look on the whole dynamics of worship itself or whatever it is when we gather around God's Word. The experience of Paul and Silas and Thessalonica and Berea give us an example of what the Lord really was talking about with this parable of the sower and the seed. Remember he talks about casting out the seed on the ground. Some of it fell on really hard ground, just died, birds ate it up. Some of it fell in shallow soil and sprung up. It was really excited. Here it looked really good, and then in the heat of the day, it kind of died out. And then others went deep into the soil, and the plants grew up big and strong and beautiful. When the Word of God is, is sown, it receives different receptions, doesn't it? By looking at how it was received by the Thessalonians and the Bereans, I would like us to end up with these words on our lips. Let's give thanks to the Lord's word. And let's give that word a welcome reception. Let's be a group of people who say the message that is preached and taught at Christ is being well received because we recognize that across the board it is nothing more and nothing less than God's word to us, than what our maker, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier wants us to know and believe for our salvation. So let's start in Thessalonica. Why do you think those Jews in Thessalonica got so angry with Paul and Silas? Do you realize that if you keep reading in Acts chapter 17, you're going to find out that they traveled 50 miles. Some of these people that started this riot in Thessalonica traveled 50 miles to Berea in order to cause problems again for Paul and Silas there. Why were they so upset? Do you think they were upset because a couple of people decided that they were going to listen to Paul and Silas and follow them instead? No, I think they were upset because of what Paul and Silas were preaching, the words that they were saying. Paul and Silas were telling the people, you are no good sinners. You can't rely on your life of sanctification. In other words, how good you are, the things that you do, your bloodline or whatever it might be. These are going to mean nothing to you when you stand before the Almighty Creator. We needed Jesus to come and live for us and die for us so that we could be saved. And of course, they heard that message. Where do you get off saying that stuff, Paul? Who are you, Silas, to tell us that that's what this means? My friends, Paul shared the message in Thessalonica with those people for three consecutive weeks before he had to leave. Now, let's just say you've gone to church for six years. That means that you've heard it 300 times. And if you're on your 60th year, you've heard it about 3,000 times. Now, that's just the, the 52 Sundays. And you know we have about 20 other services in there, too, throughout the week in the year. That's not counting Bible class or anything like that. So now I want to ask you a question. After hearing this message that many times, whether it's 330 or 3,000, 
is it still well received? When I tell you that you are no good sinners like myself, when I tell you that if you stood before God's throne today and tried to rely on who you are, what you've done, the money you've given to the church, the charities you've helped, the neighbors that you've, the whatever it might be, that you don't stand a chance. Now, you might not cause a riot and chase me down to, to Worthington, but do you still mourn over your sins? Do you still understand what it all means? For those of you with, with children on this Mother's Day, what if the Lord came to you tonight and called you by name and said, I am sick and tired. I am so fed up with all of the garbage going on in the world, but I'm going to give you a chance just in your own little part of southwest Minnesota to save people. And all it's going to take is for you to sacrifice one of your children. Who of you is going to raise your hand and say, well, I certainly would not like to see all those people destroyed. Those are too many precious lives, Lord, so you can take my child. I doubt it. But the Lord acted differently, didn't he? A world full of, a world full of good-for-nothing sinners who despise many times what he has to say, who want to go their own direction, do their own thing. And he says, I've got to save them. And the only chance for them is my son, living for them, dying, coming back to life for them. Only then will they be acceptable. Only then will they join me with the Son and the Spirit in the glory of heaven. The people in Thessalonica heard that message. And while some agreed and some believed by the power of the Spirit, some did not. So let's give the Lord's Word a welcome reception by being hearers who rely on Jesus for righteousness. Because it is God's truth that we are no good sinners who cannot stand before Him. But it's also God's great, grand, and glorious truth that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, He has purified us and prepare a place for us in heaven. Rely on Jesus and you will not be put to shame. Now while the gospel met with a mixed reception in Thessalonica, it was well received in Berea, we're told. Now this doesn't mean that the Bereans were that much better people. It doesn't mean that they, they were not sinful. What the Holy Spirit tells us here in, in, in the Word is that they took the Word of God seriously. They went and they checked out what Paul and Silas had to stay, say. Instead of taking what they heard and deciding whether they liked it or not, whether it lined up with their values or not, or their opinions or not, they said, does it line up with what God tells us in the Old Testament Scripture that we have? Now, as your pastor who cares for you in Christ, it would be my desire that the group of Christians that calls itself Christ Lutheran Church would be people like that, who would want to hear the message of Christ and understand that it is indeed that message of Christ. That you would check out what is taught and preached. That I'm not by any means above review. Paul wrote 13 of 27 of the New Testament letters. They checked them out. They wanted to make sure that what Paul was saying lined up with the Word of God. You need to apply that same thinking to what goes on at Christ, whether it be the Sunday worship, a Bible class, Sunday school, VBS, whatever it might be. And that also then applies to all of the congregational procedures, programs, policies, customs, whatever it might be, because they're all up for review and the standard is God's Word itself. Does this square with the Word of God? Not the opinions of the day, not the time that we live in. God's Word is timeless. Not what do I like, but what is God like? And He's told us what He's like. 
So why this never-ending concern for scriptural integrity? Is it because we're the ultimate conservative church body and we consider ourselves the doctrine police of the world? No. It's because we need the truth and we should cherish that truth. And anything that is not truth is trash. It's so that when we hear what God tells us, we believe that it is Him speaking to us. And there is no reason why we would ever not want to hear and believe that. It is so that you can go on your way each and every day, and finally when you draw that last breath, to know and rely on what Scripture says about Christ, not yourself, but Christ, and what He has done, not what you have done. Let's give the words, Lord's Word a, a welcome reception by being hearers from whom the Word is the highest authority. Now, because of this Scripture, the Berean Christians have come to be known as having a great reputation. I want that reputation for us, too. We want the Word of God and the salvation that He has won for us to be believed by us and as many people as we possibly can reach. Expect that desire to be realized as God blesses you according to what He has promised in these words recorded in Hebrew. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Again, this is the time in our worship when normally we would return our thanks and praise to God and the, the blessings that he has given to us so that we can further his kingdom and his word of truth to not only those in our community, but to those in the world. So we ask that those who have the opportunity and the means to be able to give continue to remember the work of the church as well. And now we unite our hearts and our minds in prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, once again we've had enjoyed the privilege of hearing your word. May its message of salvation through Christ stir up our hearts to faith and love and produce the full fruits of good works in our lives. Through the Spirit, open the Scriptures more and more to our understanding that we might know you better, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent to save us. Father, we greatly need the comfort of your word. We are by nature sinful. Our flesh is continually opposed to your will. We often find that we act against doing the things you tell us not to do and not doing what you've told us to do. Father, from your word we know that your heavenly throne is a throne of grace and that Jesus, our Savior, intercedes for us there. 
to it we come, burdened with our worries, cares, and needs, our sorrows, troubles, and illnesses. Bring us into your presence. Continue to remind us of your grace and your mercy. We know, Lord, that you are indeed a God that's in control of all things. We ask that you would continue to extend your love to, to families, in our community, our, our church, and throughout the world. Continue to be with mothers and fathers as they raise their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Continue to remind all of us of the blessing that you give to us in the foundation of the family itself. Heavenly Father, these and all other prayers that are heavy upon our hearts today, we bring to your throne of grace in the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. like to welcome you and thank you for joining us in our worship here today. Uh, just a couple of announcements, reminders for those at Christ Lutheran. You should have this last week received a, a brief newsletter that outlined a number of different important things. Uh, one of them being our Ascension worship that again will take place and will be aired um, live on, on our stream with uh, YouTube uh, on the 21st of May, that Thursday. Uh, there's also other notes in there about that as well, some of the things that we like to do here at Christ. So uh, please make sure that you take note of those and contact us if you uh, so desire to partake of that as well. For the mothers that are out there today, have a happy and blessed Mother's Day. 